Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of three opinionated guys with mics and too much free time. Strong enough to stop a speeding movie rumor. More powerful than a bad comic book event. Able to waste hours of time asking stupid questions to people who have better things to do. It's Dave, Ben, and John. It's Superhero Speak. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Minecraft Hour. Oh wait, no, no, this is Superhero Speak, and I'm your host Dave. And Ben. And John. Uh, boys and girls, you're going to have to forgive us a little bit. It's an early morning recording for us. Um, right. For, early for you re- guys. Somebody well, scheduled this pre-coffee. <laughs> pre-coffee. Ben just rolled out of bed. His hair's a mess, if you can picture that. You so know. what you're saying is BC. How is that different from any other time we're recording? <laughs> B.C. What's out oh, before coffee? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or me, it's B.T. before tea, you know, although I've already I've already had one cup at least. So, yeah. well, you said <sighs> you slept all the way until 515 this morning. So, yeah, I know I should I shouldn't sleep in like that. <laughs> For me, that uh, is sleeping in. You realize that, right? Yeah, I, I understand. I normally get up at, at 510. For, for, for me, that's a late night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, late night playing Minecraft. Oh, wait. That's John. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, so let's see. Oh my God, we haven't been, we haven't all been together like this since uh, we did a little thing a couple weeks ago. That was little? we weren't supposed to talk about that, Dave. Oh, hey, actually, it was just a week. Oh wait, that other thing. <laughs> oh, you're yes. talking the actual podcast. All right. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Oh, uh, that's why you pay me the big. But wait a minute, I don't get paid. Damn it! I keep getting that wrong. So yeah, the the Philly Podcast Festival. Um, I've heard of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's over now. None of you can go experience that anymore. But wait, we have recording. Yes. <laughs> Which we are rapidly trying to destroy one by one. No, 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 <laughs> no. But uh, I mean, it's funny because uh, um, I mean, you know, when we recorded last week with uh, with Ryan before we got on with him, John was like, oh. Still so stoked about uh, the po- the podcast festival, you know. Yes, and it, and and, and it <laughs> makes me wonder: Does he want to do that again? Mm. Want is a strong word. <laughs> yes, but John was in his element. I think I this was John. John fun. Yes, John came out of a shell that I didn't even realize he was contained in uh, when we were <laughs> when we were there. What do you he, mean? He, you became. The prop comic on uh, on that particular day. I think I think you idolized the wrong radio host in Good Morning Video Vietnam. <laughs> well, you know, I have been told that I have a voice for silent film, so <laughs> I have to go with my element, right? Yes, a prop comic on a audio podcast. <laughs> yes, is that hey. kind of like a Led Zeppelin? <laughs> you, you you do what you can. Okay. <laughs> if that makes you happy. Yes. So, yeah, well, hey, at least I brought my alcohol with me. Yes, you did. That I could do some of that. And I, and I just want to remind our <laughs> listeners that... Uh, that reminds me, I've still got some leftover. If you haven't listened... <laughs> it's never too early. Uh, well, some Never too early for, for some Foley artistry. Yeah. I want to remind our listeners that uh, if you go back and listen to episode 120... Um, we also had the, the Pete's Basement, um, contest that we're a part of, and, uh, we asked a trivia question on that episode. I'm not asking, I'm not going to say it again here. If you still want to be a part of it, you have until the 17th, and this is going up on, uh, this is going up on the 16th. So you have a day. (laughs) If you're listening to this on Wednesday, uh, you have until the 17th, go listen to that episode, hear the question that we ask, and then go to Pete'sBasement.com, uh, forward slash nycc underscore giveaway and you can win two free passes to new york comic-con this year i will be there i will be at new york comic-con this year i will be in artist alley hanging out with my good friend greg horn so if you want to see me and you don't have passes yet go back and listen to episode 120 right and if you want to see me i will be thinking about it <laughs> while not there at all i am going to try to be there this year <gasps> you are wait a minute this is news to me <laughs> Oh, are you kidding me? It's been so long since I've been to a con, and like you know, we're on a podcast about the damn thing, so why not? And, and I deserve—I 
can't even afford a vacation, so you're, I'm going to take You're good one enough. Out. You're smart enough. And gosh you're darn doggone it. it. People like you. Like you. <laughs> well, hey, Greg liked me. I I, I manned his uh, his post for a while there and, and, wow. and I had fun. I was. Wow. What? <laughs> Greg likes everyone. <laughs> Especially people who man his post. <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> Okay, way to take way to take it away from me, Dave, and way to make it awkward, Ben. <laughs> I do what I do. It's a gift. I mean, his post twice a year. You know, I mean, it's just. Oh, oh wait, goddess. And, <laughs> really? And his really? wife is his wife's okay with that. <clears throat> I I I, but, oh, wait, I wait, thought wait, we were going to my wife. Uh, either oh, okay. of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is going nowhere. I want to be. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, you know what? Then fine. If if you're not going to New York Comic Con, at least you have the upcoming TV season to look forward to, right? There is that. Yes. yes. I mean, there's, you know, we've got Flash coming back. We've got Arrow coming back. We've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back. And unfortunately, we even have Gotham coming back. Yes. How did that get a second season? I have, yeah, I cannot. Because. They, and I was the they... most mild of the people about it. And right. I still can't see it getting a second season. I have they no idea. It, they greenlit it before they lost the large share of their audience. Which This which, is Fox. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm a sh- I don't know what it is that they... I, it has to be an inexpensive show to shoot. Because I can't... I don't understand... First of all, you were pointing this out the other day, Dave. That they, they actually have, like... You know, they're... they're their score on you know per episode on uh very like rotten tomatoes is climbing like it's it's higher yes. over time and which only cements in my mind that the people who would have given it a bad score over time just dropped off and so the only people scoring it are the idiots who like it right right and it was getting a higher uh rating but yet viewers were dropping off yeah <laughs> at the same time so it's like, what the hell is going on here? I mean, it, yeah. it, it feels yeah. like it feels like if if we went back ten years ago, is it ten years ago? It might be more than ten at this point. Um, and the fire and we had the same technology, and the Firefly audience had, could rate the show and be enthusiastic about it. Then maybe that would have still been on the air. Maybe. Can we do that retroactively, please? Yeah, that would be awesome. I don't think it's happening. <laughs> Because um, they, the, uh, I sent you guys the numbers. Like they had the same audience. They had a bigger audience when they got canceled than the final episode of Gotham. The last. Yeah, but the the problem is, is that times have changed as far as as show audiences. Like the the same size audience back then would be considered an an unacceptably small audience uh, by those standards. Then the the standards have changed. You know, in today's time, you can't create you can't garner an audience the size that you could a decade ago it just isn't possible like you you can't even hope for those kinds of numbers in today's market there's too many cable channels there's too many um you know tv viewing alternatives such as netflix and hulu and things like that where they um their competition as well as just areas of viewing that they're not measuring right so so even though even though there are more people watching stuff now, I mean, our yes. popula- just by dint of the population going up, they're still finding less and less people or they're, they're still they're still looking at a, a smaller audience, meaning yes. uh, a, a longer term season or whatever, longer term series. Right. The the audiences are shrinking because the because there's so there's too many things like people are spread thin. Um, there's so many options for people to watch nowadays. Right, right. And there's also so many ways ways for people to watch these things that many of which aren't really coming into the numbers that they're calculating. Right, right. Because like not only yeah, not only is there Netflix now, there's Hulu, there's um so much even people were just watching the shows online by the from the station's websites. Right. Uh, so... And it only it's only in the past year that they've even started really even counting dvr numbers right like a a lot of those don't even you know before the past year they would pretty much ignore dvr numbers altogether it's actually something i wanted to point out i'm glad you said it because yes there are someone there's people now yelling at their their phones or their computers saying but if you count 
the DVR numbers, their Gotham numbers were higher than than uh, Firefly. Yes, but again, they just started counting DVR and right, and even that has its limits. They really, right. I, I believe, in most cases, they only look at the DVR numbers for people who've watched it within one week of the original airing of the show. Yes, yes, it has to be within, I think, six days, something like that. Yeah. Prior to the next episode airing, basically. Which is so funny because then, like, how do you, how do you rate something like um, uh, Daredevil, which is you know on Netflix and all the episodes are put out right away, and you could watch uh, the first three episodes and then decide a month later to go back and finish it. You right. know that doesn't mean it wasn't popular. It just it's it's on the yeah, internet. Means that, just means that person's insane. Yeah, but they, <laughs> but but that didn't happen, you know. They probably they probably looking at the numbers and say, well, you know, this guy started watching on a Wednesday and finished watching all the episodes on a Thursday, and on Friday got fired for some reason. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and then but then the other issue is right, like um, we have Jessica Jones coming out soon, so there's there might be people who are Jessica Jones fans who jump on to watch that and then go go oh, let me go back and watch Daredevil now that didn't watch the first time but that's yeah. now it's 6 7 months later 8 months later like right you know are you, how do you rate that you really it's really hard to rate that at that point well i would say that netflix will find a way to rate that because they're they're smart about these things they understand that the way, the new ways that people are watching things the problem is that the the general like daredevil probably doesn't even and most of these netflix shows probably don't even show up on the radar of these traditional types of measurement um because the the industry hasn't really shifted to to account for them appropriately right. no um, i mean it's 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 <clears throat> it's it's true with all the traditional media industries um they don't know how to rate these things anymore because and and the thing is for the longest time they were trying to hold on to the old ways i'll just use the nielsen ratings they don't mean right. anything anymore where Which, i'm not i don't think they really mentioned anything in the first place but but yeah, yeah no cuz the, they they handpicked the families that were able to you know, that got a nielsen box yeah so they they were literally given to people that they knew would boosters or bolster up certain ratings right it, that right. never and it's a narrow sample size. Like it's, we we literally have the technology at this point to measure actual numbers. Right. Every what but, everyone's but we watching. Don't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They know what you're watching, people. So that porn you watched last night, we know. Oh wait. Um. Well, of course you know. I shared that with you. Oh. Oh. oh okay. wait. <laughs> oh, God. And, and but you you know you know the only people that are getting hurt by all this, the are the DC the, fans who have to watch Gotham. No, besides them, oh, okay. and, and less and less so than them. <laughs> the, the the poor advertisers. They yeah. they are so and 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 we who worked for a certain company that had to do with advertising at one point or another. Um, you know, it, the 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 ways in way in which people are blocking advertising now. I mean, Netflix has got the right idea. You pay a small amount and you get a bunch of shows. The only thing, of course, which sucks is that the movie theater, the, um, was it the producers of content are trying to cut Netflix out constantly and put stuff on their own venues. But That's it's cool. just, but the advertisers, I mean, even, even on, it, oh, it, if you don't know, uh, YouTube, uh, just came out apparently like a couple of days ago with a way of getting around stuff like ad blocks. You're watching advertisements no matter what you do now. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, and and it's also why this this article came out a little while ago. I don't think we ever talked about it. Is uh, Netflix has been playing around with the idea of adding advertising, um, and it's not clear how they're going to do it. Like if they're going to have a free service and then the paid one, you don't have advertising or what. But there is a market where they were um, in the Midwest somewhere where they started playing with that, putting advertising on. You know, like. Do we just do an ad at the beginning of it? Do we do one in the middle? Um, and I think it's because of what John just said is they're, they're they're the bigger boys are trying to do everything they can to push Netflix out. They're they're limiting what content they can get. They're Comcast we all know is playing with the um, the bandwidth, allowing you to be have, a, have smooth streaming on Netflix and all that fun. They stuff. They were, they were. I know net neutrality fixed that, but. Um, <clears throat> Which is why I didn't get a smart TV until after they passed that. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's not because I'm cheap That's and why. I was waiting. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, my 
God, Maybe. My, my wife can't stop watching Netflix now on the TV. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, it, it's a scary thought though, you know, like, oh, well, to, to make everyone happy so we can get more content, we're just going to go the way everyone else is, you know? Well, yeah. And it, it would be a shame because, I mean, it, it is sort of one of those, those pieces of what I find a nuisance about, like, you know, I, I use Netflix fairly heavily um, for things, but I also occasionally will watch things through Hulu. And Hulu's also charging you, you know, a, a monthly fee, but they've always thrown commercials in there. And that's that's always bugged me a bit. Like, if you're going to throw the commercials in there, those commercials are there to abate costs. So you don't have to charge people. Exactly. Right, right. But they choose to anyway. Exactly. And that's and that's that actually the the article that I read was pointed to Hulu as a model like that, you know, well if they can do it, then why can't Netflix? It's like, yeah, but it's because, because they shouldn't do it. That's why. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it'd be like paying for HBO and then HBO putting commercials in the middle of uh, Game of Thrones. Right. You know, it'd be like, why am I paying for this then? Exactly. You're you're paying a premium to not have to watch those ads. And I, I honestly like like I said, I only recently started subscribing to Hulu for, for certain shows that I wanted to have access to on there. Um but it, it still it bugs me. It bugs me that I'm paying money and I still have to watch commercials that I cannot skip. Well, you know how you solve that. You cancel your Hulu. I know that. I know hmm. I can do that. That's how um, you, you vote with your voice by cancel with your I get dollar. That. Right. But it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change their behavior. If it's a every, model that people have bought into. If not everyone, everyone listening to I this understand. podcast, if everyone listening to this podcast who subscribes to Hulu canceled after listening then, to this podcast, not canceled it, the podcast, canceled Hulu, <laughs> <laughs> then they would send a message to them. You have a, uh, a, 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 a gross idea of the size of our audience, Dave, and their impact. But, uh, uh Anyway, wow. well, getting right back again, to then getting again, back to then again, they're not paying for this podcast, so they're probably not paying for Hulu. So that's true, exactly. The, right, the so, impact is small. So back to God Ham. Um, oh God! Have you seen the trailer or any of the videos for the upcoming season? Yeah, and I'm just like that. That was the whole thing too. The biggest complaint I had from last season, I heard from other DC fans as well, is they just kept shoehorning in villain after villain after villain, and yeah. Guess what they said? Guess what? Next season's even more of that. Yeah, it's all about villains because it hasn't been so far. No. Nah. Um, and and some of these might even have capes because why not? Of course, it makes sense. I. Yeah. Uh, it, it's uh, gonna it's gonna wind up. I mean, Smallville had the same problem at the end of their ten, near the end of their tenure, where it just they had introduced so many characters that it it became more of a soap opera than an action thing you know they, they yeah. had to they had to start inventing conflict and it just it, it got it got weird <laughs> i agree yeah i mean but the thing that smallville was trying to do that was a little bit weird was they were trying to do the you know the equivalent is to the question of you know what was jesus doing between age 12 and 30 they were doing that <laughs> with with superman <laughs> essentially <laughs> Ah, Jesus metaphor. That's that is <laughs> awesome. That is the most awesome comparison I've ever heard. <laughs> so anyway, and, and yeah, so they 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 created a lot of uh, lore and mythos that 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 they played around with because what else were they going to do? Um, and I and I bought into that much more so than I'm buying into the the Gotham version of it because because that isn't what it is in that case. I mean, yes, you have a young. Bruce Wayne, you know, trying to to figure things out, but that's almost it's not even a secondary plot. It's a it's a tertiary plot at best to this show. This show is really about a city with corruption and weird uh, weirdos. Really, is what it's about. Corruption <laughs> and weirdos is, right. is is all that's going on here. And there's really, I don't know, it bothers me. It bothers me on a because the whole first season was mostly you know, uh, organized crime. And I was, even though, you know, that wasn't my problem with it, that I was okay with because that's what it should be. It right. shouldn't be anything but organized crime because that's what was prevalent up to the point that Batman came to town. Right. So to speak. Um, <clears throat> so to have any other version of villains aside from organized criminals, mafia and those sorts of things is to tarnish the mythos 
by a by a significant margin. Um, because really, it's and it, it's something that's been established over and over again in various different formats. The the rise of the costume villains was a direct result of the fall of organized crime at the hands of Batman. Right. Which they have totally thrown that out the window. And and not only that, like th- th- so many people have pointed this out. Um, it just it doesn't make sense for the ages either. Like you know, Harvey Dent and and Bruce Wayne were supposed to be really good friends, but they brought in a Harvey Dent who's ten years older than the Bruce right. Wayne we currently have. Right. Um, they were supposed to be like a DA character, so they they went with it. Right, right. But like they went to college together. Like well, obviously they can't go to college together now. And well, and they it's, could if if you know he got a scholarship because he's you know really smart and yeah. <laughs> I sorry, just yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I, and I, and it's and and then the worst <laughs> and and everyone outcried that I know when they brought in their Joker oh. and they're continuing oh. with him. See, and that's like, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The Joker and and I'm saying what other people have said in the past. Uh, the Joker was somebody you you. The reason why he's so scary is because you have you nobody ever knew where the hell he came from. What his past really was, all they knew was he was insane and he'd kill you with a drop of a hat. Right. And probably in some way that was kind of funny, but also really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the whole thing with the, the with not really knowing who he is and what he is. There's a psychological aspect of you can put your fears behind what he is and make that makes him scarier. Yes. You know, when you find out that his name's Joe and, you know, he's crazy because his girlfriend broke up with him and whatever that you diminishes know. him it, di- right. it just really diminishes him right and it, and it gives you a way to also fight him and make him not scary anymore and yeah like why would you do that oh I don't. because mm-hmm. money because money yeah because, because there's because there's money rolling in for it people want to advertise alongside the show and that's the problem with the advertising model it's yes. it's it's propelling content for the wrong reasons <laughs> uh yes commercialism versus art um yeah so 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 everyone you have that to look forward to the season uh aren't you glad <laughs> let's talk about a show i'm actually gonna watch okay okay uh flash sure okay. oh okay i'll watch that so we have we have so are they gonna call this the flashes this season i don't know now now before we go on mm-hmm. people are going to go wait a minute you're complaining about gotham because you think they're introducing too many characters and now flash is doing the same thing no, they're not. No, they're not. No, well, they are, but the they're doing it for there. a good reason. I don't buy right. an introduction of a bunch of characters as long as there's a story to drive in that direction. Exactly. And, and the entire first season set up for this, in you know, opening this door. Yes. Well, so he, that's he talk, that's our he, stance. Yeah, but but keep keep in mind also the Gotham is introducing characters that literally have almost no right to be there at the point in time in which right. they're representing. Right. The Flash. It's okay to introduce the characters because this is the story we're watching. This is when the characters came in. We're watching yes. a very long origin story, but that's fine. That's right. That's the story. Yeah. Yes. And Gotham involved... is a big what if story of what if we introduced all of these villains that Batman fought long before Batman showed up? Right. And it's been well established in the comics over and over again that through different means that Jay Garrick and and uh, uh, oh God Barry know each other. You know, it's not like, yeah. it's not like, you know, they, they created that connection for the TV show, you know? Right. Yeah. So yeah. And, and I do like what they have, what they have in store. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, it is, it's a good show. Um, yeah. Jay Garrick seems like it, it'll be an interesting addition. Some, and, uh, and I have read somewhere that we will see Harrison Wells back in the picture. Um, I, yeah, I did see that it, too. But it won't be. It won't be. Um, it won't be the the reverse Flash version. It'll be the real, authentic Harrison Wells from some alternate reality. Uh, it's right. going to be a timey wimey thing, isn't it? It is going to be a timey wimey thing. <laughs> a wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Yeah. yeah and 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 the uh, which you know, I kind of, I kind of I hypothesized that he would be our Harrison Wells, but I did say that I think they could bring him back. Yeah, um, they. They'd be difficult. I mean, I guess they could because they didn't erase. But the problem is that would mean I don't know. It would be a conflict. Like it would it would ripple the time stream. I think in a weird way. Right. 
So, um, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and they also are introducing, um, what's his name, Wally West, and which that I find interesting because they're they're introducing a character as Wally West. They're adhering to the mythos that they created in that because um, Wally West is typically uh, Iris's uh, nephew or cousin or something like that. And uh, nephew, I believe. Nephew. And so because they've established the West family as African-American in the show, so will be Wally West. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when I saw people complain online about that, I was just like, have you been watching the show? Iris and, and her father are black. Like, it wouldn't make any sense to have him be white. Like, right. if, seriously. If anyone out there who has a problem with that, let us know and give us your home addresses. We'll come punch you in the face. <laughs> It, like, like well, I mean, you can understand you can we'll understand partially where they're coming from, but only only in a this this change wasn't made like the Fantastic Four just well, to introduce, uh, you know, we we have to, to be to politically correct. Color. Yeah, well, yeah. My my I mean, thing is the, the the woman playing playing Iris is like she's amazing and she's done a really right. good job and right. This was know, not an affirmative action move. This was a you know. A recognizing a that move. we have it was a logical move we, we there is a diverse uh audience and yeah it was and a bit of a twist but if you're already on board if you already were okay with the 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 uh, race change for iris and her father then why should it matter if they they continue that logical uh conclusion with with wally as well it should fit yeah. and, right. and it seems to me there's there is actual chemistry between you know be, well between barry and and Iris, so you know that the actors are doing their job, and I I think they should just stick with it. So it's there's no problem with you know the race change there. It just they yeah. they found good actors, fine. Right, and my and my thing was like I don't there I didn't see any big outrage over Iris, uh, race change. So like why people all of a sudden now are up in the arms about Wally? It's like oh no. true, yeah, right, you know and. I mean, well, if you're thing... such if you're such a big Flash fan to 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 adhere that heavily to the canon and can, can care that much, then you should have had this outrage a year ago when they because it it should have been easy to see that path. Like right. I didn't I didn't put it together at the time because I didn't really I was never as big a fan and I didn't really care enough. But um the uh you know as soon as Iris West was was made to be an African American character, it's a foregone conclusion that Wally West is likely to also be black. Right. It would be like, you know, taking, uh, uh, having Johnny Storm be black and then having Sue Storm be white. You know, it just wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Um, but. <laughs> Burn. I'm curious though, um, regardless of anyone's race, they're ringing Jay Garrick in as a flash from another universe, which, uh -huh. which I love because I love the whole old idea. I've, I've said this over and over again that flash. When they came up with the show, they went, all these people who want these shows steeped in, in real world logic, screw you. This is a comic book show. Um, so they're introducing, uh, Jay Garrick as a flash from another universe. Is Wally West actually going to be the nephew or cousin, uh, um, or is he going to be flash from another universe? Um, I hope this isn't going to become a sliders. I don't think, well, yeah, that'll be weird. I don't think they're going to do that. Well, yeah, but he's... I think I, he'll I, be... And I, I think he'll legitimately be Iris's nephew, and for reasons that they'll explain, he'll come into the story. Um, I don't, but I don't know. Who knows? If you look at it, though, it looks like they're introducing a lot of this stuff from him going into that wormhole thing at the end of season one. Well, let's put it this way. They're introducing a lot of... It seems like they're introducing a lot of that stuff, but you have to remember, when you're seeing these previews this early... Uh, before the show starts, you're only seeing stuff that they've filmed already, which are probably for the first maybe three episodes of the season. Right, and so, to some extent, it's sizzle reel. It's stuff that they put together just to be able to advertise. It may not even be on the show, right? Be pretty specific. Yeah, and and that's if you can find the real stuff. If you go to YouTube, there are like thousands of fake trailers for season two. <laughs> There's lots of that. There's lots of fake. Trailers. I know you get sucked into that text, John. So so. Wait, you're saying they put fake, fake stuff on YouTube? Things. No way. <gasps> <laughs> so, so yes. Uh, okay, I, I, I guess so. Um, you know, I don't think we should see him become the Flash then, if he's actually just Wally West on the show, because it's too early. You know, to have two Flash right, right. running That's, around. 
And I tend to believe that's likely to be the case, that, that he'll just be Wally West for some period of time, and they'll find some way to turn him into another Flash. Or they'll kill him off, and then they'll bring in someone that looks just like him, <laughs> named <laughs> Wally, who also <laughs> needs, needs the Wally West, his twin brother, or, or, or whatever. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> they already did that. <laughs> you know, what about uh, what about the other show with the Atom? That's what I'm interested yes. in. I'm interested Legends to see tomorrow. how they're going. I'm interested in that for, yeah. for multiple reasons. So for one, so if you've seen the trailer for it, it seems that for one, Star League City will now be Star City in honor of him, even though he's not actually dead. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the city seems to think he's dead, which is interesting. Um, and I'm sure that'll be a plot point that they'll cover in the, the first half of the season somehow. Because obviously he'll have to be around in time for Legends of Tomorrow. Um, but uh, I'm curious how they're going to handle the whole Oliver Queen being actually in a good mood and trying to be happy. Like, I don't want to see Oliver go back to the broody, annoying asshat that he has been. Um, I want to <laughs> I want to see I want to see a real green arrow. I want to see a little bit lighter, a little bit. Uh, I want to see some of that come out in, in his everyday persona. Um, hopefully they'll adhere to that. But And obviously, they, they I think they've teased at the fact that they're going to, this will be the time that they'll bring uh, Sarah back in this in this next set of episodes. Yeah. Yeah. How, how does that work? Lazarus Pit. Wait, what? I didn't hear you. The Lazarus Pit. Oh, God. Raza, yeah, Bush, yeah, but that's supposed Raza, to drive you... Malcolm Merlin yeah, but it's is, supposed is to start you crazy. Now. Right. Which is so that'll be a plot point, you know, half a season is dealing with the, the crazy murderous psychopath that Sarah Lamb becomes and they can get her cooled down enough to be, you know, on the right side of things. Well, and I, I, that was something too. She's not Black Canary in the Legends of Tomorrow. She's White Canary. She's okay. White Canary, which is actually an established DC character, but it's not right. typically her as right. the alter ego. I wonder if this goes back to the whole um, uh, derived character thing. Yeah. Well, and also in the comics, White Canary is a nut job, so it, it kind of fits. How? Too early. Too early. <laughs> Too soon. No. Oh. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> right, and 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 that fits, and I can see where they're going with that. Um, yeah, I mean, because that's like that's and that's just, this is my worry, right? We're bringing in alternate universes. Um, we already did time travel on Flash, and we're bringing alternate universes on Flash, and now we're introducing a show which is all based around time travel. Um, yeah, and and then and, and weird alternate versions of things. I'd and I'm kind of Rory in charge of all the things. Rory is in charge. Come on, <laughs> no, he was Seriously? the most level-headed of those guys as it was. Rory is the best one to be in charge. That's true, you and, and you know what this means, right? What it 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 means that that there there might be a guest, you know, episode with uh, with Amy Pond. So <laughs> it won't be Amy Pond. They'll find a way. <laughs> I know. I I see where she, I see where you're going. Yes, there, it's a it's an opening. They already technically had that opening with uh, Captain Captain Jack Harkness in the show. Um, That's but, true. Yeah, it, a, a casting opening to bring in some other uh, Doctor Who alumni. Um, this is going to be another one of those things where can you spot the sheer number of Doctor Who alumni that joined yeah. the show? So, Wait, could they bring Doctor Who in on the Flash since they're doing dealing with alternate universes? I, that that's a, exactly I, what I'm I saying. Think that at most, I think you could get maybe some sort of weird referential nod, but you're not going to get a real crossover. But I'll here's what here's here's the thing I'm most excited about with Arrow this season. They're bringing that, in that he's not NASA. Saying, no, not that. <laughs> I already talked about that. <laughs> we're going to we're going to get some resolution to a show that got killed last season. Okay. They're bringing in Constantine. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he is going to be in episodes of this show. Yeah, no, did, and same actor. Same actor. Same yeah, part. How? How did that get canceled and Gotham is still alive? Really? Uh, you know, Seriously, man. There, there's a part of my brain that's that's a raging monster over that, and I've tried to subdue it. Um, <laughs> but yes, it, it doesn't. It's baffling. It doesn't make any sense. But uh, the only logic I can apply to it is that Constantine was is most likely a more expensive show 
um, because of the effects. And and the Flash you know, isn't. And <laughs> Constantine is on NBC, where they're a little bit more concerned about those rating numbers than Fox is slightly. Mm. Fox is still Fox is still technically second tier, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, well, they, so... they're, that channel is not their, you know, <laughs> not the news show, apparently. But okay, hold on a second. Which channel is then um, Supergirl going to be on? That's CBS. CBS, yeah. So that's the Constantine replacement on CBS. Well, it's not it's nothing <laughs> on CBS before. This oh, is their, oh, this is their oh. first foray into superhero television in, in who knows decades. Oh, that's probably. right. You said NBC. I didn't. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, I did not watch Constantine. I and you were part of the episode. problem, Dave. <laughs> I watched the first episode, and then see, I I watched it, and it wasn't that bad. They, it was they, great. They had the yeah the first. And and you could tell they were going to be there. I mean, it's a first season, so there's always a couple of bumps. The character, the actors getting into character, the right. figuring out who they really are as they're they're bringing these it, characters to life, right. and they were doing was, a good job. They were. It was dark. It was messy. It was you know there there it was complex. Um, oh yeah, there was a whole bunch of subplots going on that. Right, but it was but it was well thought out. It was well written and, and well executed. I think. And it and it made for like that's a version of Constantine I really can enjoy, and I'm and I'm happy to see that they're bringing that they're not they're not throwing that away that that these guys are trying to honor the 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 integrity of that show by bringing him in to to be part of the Arrow world and and hopefully more than just once. And they did leave. And if you watch the whole season, they that ended on a note where you wanted more big right. time. I mean, they could have him bounce around to all the shows, you know, to continue on his storyline. Hey, maybe at one point he'll get his own show. <laughs> <laughs> on the CW? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. Well, it, it wouldn't could. be the first they time could. that one network picked up where another Actually, network but dropped that, the ball. That would be, Go ahead. That would be a really cool way to do it. Bring him in. Um, this sprinkle season, him episodes spring, him, sprinkle him in all the episodes here and there, continuing on with his story from where it left off. Don't right. not not well, reintroducing and him, and then and allowing things to advance as background subplot. And then you just start just pick right, it up. Right, you just start a new season on on yeah. CW where he's exactly where he was. I mean, he right. moves along like like you don't need to redo his origin or anything at that point. Like, yeah, I think honestly. Point, the reason they didn't uh, automatically like jump jump in there and try to pick it up as it was when it was canceled um, was because you know they already had you know a third show that they're introducing right. this season. I think they they don't want to stretch themselves too far too thin. True, true. I think you really do. You do you guys see the same pattern where it's like almost almost every um, scripted show now is either going to be a Law and Order an NCIS or a Marvel or DC uh, venue. Literally, there's going to be no other scripted shows on the air. Yeah. No, like, no, 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 no. I'm sure there'll be a couple of things that pilot and then okay, okay, die okay. in a week. As, have you guys been watching Mr. Robot? Oh, yes. No, I didn't. No, what is wrong with you? Go, <laughs> well, go find I, it, look, watch I, all of it. I never that watched Big Bang Theory either, show. so... <laughs> Yeah, but Big Bang Theory, we're not, we're That's talking completely about. Completely different levels. Yeah. <laughs> completely, completely different levels. No, it, it, for me, it's the same level. It's it's the one where I say, oh, I never saw it. And everybody starts screaming at me like, what the hell's wrong with you? Right. <laughs> it, Mr. Robot is the breakout summer hit uh, of this year. And it, it was amazing. I mean, it's, this was awesome television. And everyone who has a brain should watch the show. Um, it's, well, it it's counts, an, yeah. Yeah. The uh, at its core, it's basically about this guy who's a hacker, both professionally and you know in his free time, and uh, him getting involved in some very shady uh, anti-establishment type movements. Um, but there's a lot of like this guy is like super anti-social, definitely like he's he is a a very flawed anti-hero. Um, mm-hmm. But you really get on board with him, and and there's these sub plots and and weird mysteries and things that you sort of latch on to over time it's like what is because you know that he's there's bits of him that are that are slightly off and it, and it's it's really really clever and interesting the way they, right. they played it out did you and, do you saw the the whole season dave 
No. I, oh, you, yeah. Where Where did you end up? I have three episodes left to go. Okay. Um, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil anything anyway. But I'm definitely not gonna spoil anything related to those right now. And I've heard that a lot happens in the last three episodes. So. Yes. Um, and 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 yes, I'm one of those that I go back and watch things after they air, after everyone tells me what a great show it is. Yeah. Um, and if none of that's good enough for you, it stars Christian Slater. So come that's on, true. I co-stars. mean, co-stars, right? So I mean, come on, if you're a Cuffs fan, I just <laughs> not want to watch Mr. Robot. Um, a, who, a who's fan? You know, he did so oh many my God. things. That was not the top, <laughs> the peak of his his, of his no, career. No, no, no. I'm I'm sorry, Cuffs. Broken Arrow. That's all you need to know about Christian Slater. <laughs> Are you purposely trying to pick the two worst movies he was ever in? I actually like Broken Arrow, so stop. <laughs> sure. um, there was there were so many good movies. Heather's, Heather's, um, uh, pump up the volume. The Heather's I've heard of. <laughs> Have oh, you heard of John. Christian Slater, John? It, you know, it's vaguely familiar. I don't know. True Romance. True Romance. I've heard. Wasn't Heather's his first movie? Um, not his first. No, because he was a child actor. He did some things when he was pretty young. Um, it was one of his first big movies that he okay. was in, where he was actually like in a starring role. Um, but... he was actually on The Nerdist uh, recently. Him yes. and, and Rami Rami Malek. Yes, that was a really good episode. It was. Um... I really liked his his Jack Nicholson impression story about that. Oh God. Yes. So, He's the he's the only person that should play young Jack. Um, so so anyway, uh, the point is that there is other good scripted shows out there. Um, they're just a lot of them aren't on the main three anymore. You know, yeah, I mean, some of them aren't even on television. But well, uh, that's true. Like uh, stuff that's on Netflix, right? Yeah, Jessica Jones is is that gonna be on? That's the Netflix that is coming movie. out. Yes, not. I detailed. really want to see that. Well, you know, John, if you... Close to the, is it the end of the year or is it, like, in early 2016? I can't remember. Okay, okay, John and Ben, if you actually visited our website once a day, you would see that we have a news article that we just posted on Thursday when they announced... Wait, we put things on the site? <laughs> when they announced the uh, release date for it, uh, there was a video that came out for the... I saw the video. Trailer. So it's October uh 17th i believe okay cool something to look forward to that is going to be interesting yes, yes. there's no now, way that couldn't be interesting now if, yeah now if for people who've seen the teaser trailer you can you can uh confirm or deny this john wait uh, there's a bad. teaser trailer there's bad. a teaser trailer which shows but you it's, pretty much nothing i was going to say it shows you nothing it's just like yes. it's like uh um, it's, it's like it a reminds sizzle. you of those it reminds Jeez. you of those those uh sometimes uh marvel will put together teaser trailers for comics storylines that are coming out or just are they're just images that go by real quick right you know right. and and it doesn't doesn't like, mean anything like the flash season two thing it's a lot of that yeah yeah, a yeah they... it slightly reminds me of the opening credits to orphan black oh okay yeah which which i'm heavily into now so that show is see awesome i too. do watch stuff yeah oh, okay no uh, it's october 20th sorry okay but it's it's this fall which is good yes, yes. i went to I went to superheroespeak.com and it's, you know, the news article that was posted on September 11th. I've heard of uh, this website. I should probably read stuff on there more often. Yeah, you probably should. Uh, or follow them on Twitter because, you know. I probably do, but I don't use Twitter. <laughs> go look at their Facebook page once in a while. I am looking at their Facebook page right now. I actually don't even see that article. But anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, um, I yeah, see an it, article uh, for something that I wrote on um, on Movie Pilot. Oh, uh-huh. people should. Why are those it. Why are those guys promoting you? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What other shows do we have? <laughs> so what else uh, is coming out? No, well, we didn't. Finish. So, so we have Supergirl. Hello. Is there anything else awesome. to say about uh, the extended about trailer Arrow that was really things? Good. You guys both cut out for a second. That was weird. I don't know if that was on my end or... Okay. That, that, that's because we're not allowed to talk at the same time. It cancels our reality. So yeah. so you, I heard Supergirl. And what were the other ones you were saying? So, well, I think we've covered Arrow well enough at this point. Um, and Legends of Tomorrow and Flash. The the, the semi-decent shows. Um, then we have Supergirl premiering. And, of course, we have a, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 coming up. Yes. 
and and later uh, um, Agent Carter uh, goes to Hollywood. John, have you seen the teaser trailer for Agents of Shield yet? Yes, it looks a mess, but I'm going to watch it because I it's wouldn't awesome. say it looks a mess. I think it looks like an awesome mess. I'm looking yeah, forward. Yeah, an awesome mess. That's that's a good. What they didn't that, show us actually... at all is what, what kind of hand Coulson has now. Oh wait, yeah. People can forget that. He lost his hand at the end of the last season. That's right. I, I completely forgot. Now, maybe, I mean, come on. Maybe, that made him part maybe, of phase two. Maybe Aquaman can help him out. Give him a big uh, I think that, that would be a little bit difficult. <laughs> so, um, all right, exactly. So what are they going to do about that? Is he going to give him a, a robotic hand? Is he going to have a hook? Give him well, a patch. Is he already an android? Oh, wait, no. He's not, a, he's not an LMD. So. Uh, right, right. Yeah, so you can't just replace a- it. Just, just put an eye patch over it. <laughs> that is that is a common fix in the uh, in the Marvel world, it seems. Oh my god! Yeah, it's, it's, it's I don't know what they're gonna do. I mean, he can't he can't walk around all season with his arm in a sling to hide his hand. Um, yeah, you know. Well, but yet, I'm sure they'll it, do something with it. In the real world, like they're they're having uh, uh, dramatic leaps and with uh, artificial limbs. Um, Right. You know, he, with, could, he could have an Iron Man hand. I was about to say, so so it, they could easily give him a robotic hand. Right. right. The problem is, though, that would mean he has to reveal himself to Tony Stark finally, who will probably punch uh, him in the face. You think Tony would punch him in the face? I think he would. Now, you, and then he would help him back up. That's just the okay, way Tony is. About that, though, wasn't there an article? That I swear I, I read an article where they had um, put one of the executives... For all right, all right. The Marvel, the Marvel I, I, universe under, under. I knew we Disney eventually people. would have to get to this. So, yeah. So Kevin Feige, who yeah. has been the CEO of Marvel Films for and my hero for since uh, Iron, no, yeah, since Iron Man one, since pretty much the the MCU, right? And uh, he was reporting directly to Marvel CEO. Um, I can't. His name escapes me at the moment. Perlmutter. Ma- yeah, Perlmutter. Um, he's now going to be reporting directly to the Disney uh, CEO. CEO, which um, may have the effect of putting a lot more distance between the TV part of the universe and the movie part of the universe. That's uh, from what I've read. Fears. I have a modicum of concern about that, but not a lot. I don't think it's going to to blur those lines much because it obviously is something they've been trying to have connectivity in. Um, so yeah, I'm. I don't think it's going to cause that rift. I think that I think that it was a move to abate a problem that has been that that has been going on behind the scenes that we've only seen the after effects of. Um, you know, we've seen Edgar Wright walk away from his pet project with Marvel with Ant Man. We and we've seen Joss Whedon, you know, become sort of. Uh, Hermetic and, and asinine towards the end of uh, promoting Age of Ultron, and then eventually saying he's not going to do anything with Marvel anymore. Um, and I think all, a lot of that goes back to the reason it's it's the 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 reason that all of these things have happened has a, I think a lot to do with the leadership roll, you know rolling up through Perlmutter um, and the Marvel influence, um, basically being at odds with other influences. And so I think that, and you know, at odds with Kevin Feige and at odds with Disney's um, idea of where how things should be going, and so it's created this, you know, mommy and daddy are fighting scenario, that's that's driven some people away. So I think this is a good move for the movies. All right, so I have heard two different uh, thought patterns on this. For actually, I've heard three. I've heard three different uh, um, uh, reasoning for this. The first one to me sounds a bit ridiculous, um, and it just sounds like pure greed. Is Disney was not happy with the performance of Avengers two? They didn't <laughs> feel that made enough money. It what? made one point four billion dollars. People, I don't understand how that's so not. But according to supposedly uh, Disney insiders, um, they were saying that. Uh, they were expecting it to perform better than the first Avengers, which I think made 1.57 billion worldwide. Yeah. But you also have to remember that it hasn't come out on DVD yet, so we don't know right. what it's. It's not done. Uh, 
I, I think John just died. That wasn't me. Uh, I think Dave just died. Yeah. I think. Hello. Dave. Hello. Yes. Did your you, 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 did your desk just fall apart? My or my your chair? Table, my table fell Hello? over. What happened to you? So this this just in. This is breaking news. Uh, it seems that our co-host Dave has had a furniture accident. IKEA has failed him, and we will hopefully be recovering. But we will give you moment by moment uh, coverage <laughs> of of this event as it unfolds. Now, here's what I understand. I'm the one who's drinking at ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Apparently, his table is drinking. It was being held it, together with bailing wire and uh, duct tape. Well, you know, you can't use the mustache duct tape to put stuff together. It's not what it's for, really. It's true. Hello. Hi. How's it going? That's okay. We 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 filled the airtime with jokes been, about you. Yes. yes. Uh, you will enjoy them in editing, I'm sure. Uh, yes. No, you got to keep just keep the whole thing in for crap's sake. <laughs> it's tension. We're creating tension. All right. All right. Okay. Hold on. So I heard three things. The first one being that Marvel, uh, Disney didn't feel that uh, Avengers two made enough money. Oh, good, right. you didn't nice preposterous. So, so one point four billion, where apparently, supposedly the first one made I think one point five seven something like that. Yeah. Um, so they and they wanted it to perform better than that one, but sequels never do as well as the original. Eh, um, it's not impossible, but it's it's not impossible, but it's very rare and. So it's like, okay, well, that doesn't seem to me logical. The other one was they were saying Perlmutter uh, is traditionally a penny pincher mm -hmm. and that he was slashing money here and there and the creative people weren't happy with that and that's why they've walked away. Right. So Disney's He's also like, a micromanager from what I've heard. Right. And then, right, the last one is kind of like, well, uh, you know, it goes along with what you were saying where people... We're not, weren't happy with the way they were running things because, um, was it James Gunn wanted Ant-Man to be a standalone movie and Marvel was like, no, that's got to be part of our universe, you know, and they wanted him to add in a couple, you know, a couple little things that linked it together. In yeah. Gunn's defense, you can't do a Marvel movie and expect it to be standalone at this point. Right, exactly. So it's kind of like you, I, I that argument, I, 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 kind of see but at the same time no because it's not it's not like you can sit there and go i want to make a movie about luke skywalker and it has nothing to do with the rest of the star wars universe yeah you know like they're not gonna let no, no one's gonna let you do that you know right it's gonna be like no it ties into the universe and and here's the plot point but i do think you know like um in avengers 2 the whole thing with thor and the lake and the and the that felt forced. It didn't it, fit with that. It movie. did a little bit. Although I found this out recently, there was an Easter egg in that in that scene that that none of us caught. Um, what? That was total totally a Joss Whedon thing. So this and I'm going to take this tangent moment here. Um, was it some little <laughs> message that says this scene sucks? No. So <laughs> so there's there's this, in this scene where where Thor is on his little acid trip and seeing all these. Uh, um, you know, premonitions and whatnot. There's a scene where there's like these characters in the shadows between these columns. There's three of them, and they're these masked characters. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The three of them have these like you know metal masks on. The first one, like so, there's three in a row. The first one it has a mask of a wolf. The second one has a, ra a mask of a ram, and the third one has a mask of a stag, or also known as a heart. Oh, Wolfram Hart. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Wolfram Hart. Oh, nice. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you get it, Dave? Yes. I'm okay. just trying to figure out, you know, I guess, how did he sneak that by? Or did they, or did they, they went, oh, okay, that, that well, works. Seriously, what, what, if, it, how would you know? Would like, it, it, barely, it barely makes a, any impact on the scene, so why not? Whether it actually actually continues into anything in the Thor Ragnarok is probably, it probably won't. Um, right. 
it was really just uh, Joss Whedon playing around and saying, what if I sneak this in here? Yeah, somehow I don't think Buffy's going to appear somehow. No. Although he managed to sneak Although a Buffy Although if you did, that would be freaking... pretty awesome. Well, yeah. isn't they Sith, did manage to... isn't Sith was basically a... the Buffy of the, uh, of the Asgardian universe? Yeah, well, th- there was a Buffy in Firefly, so... Wait, wait, are you saying... That's true. Wait, did you just say Thor is the Buffy of the... No, I said Lady oh. Sif. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Lady Sif is the... Is the uh... Is their version of Buffy? Essentially. No, I think Thor is that version of Buffy. Uh, he does <laughs> have long Marvel blonde universe. hair. I'll give you that. All, he has long blonde hair. He uses a, a, a hammer, but if you took the, ha- the 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 head off of the hammer, it's just a wooden stake. I mean, come on. That's it's it's a bit of a reach. I'll, I'm I'm going to say that's a bit of a reach, but uh, <laughs> if that's how you want to take it, go right ahead. Uh, as much as I like that idea. <laughs> yes. No. All right, fine, 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 fine. So, um, but yeah, but again, and there is also a rumor too. I don't know how true this is that um, we know that there's this Marvel think tank that gets together every once in a while, and they um, talk about not only the comic books that are coming out and the, and the big crossover storylines that they're going to do, uh, but now they've gotten involved with the movies where they have uh they're given the scripts for review and they they try to say oh let's put this plot point in let's put that plot point in let's tie this together this way and uh they're saying that they won't be involved anymore which that's i think that's not good that would be a huge mistake yeah. you know i mean well, maybe not maybe taking away some of their control and only having them there as a consulting uh piece but mm-hmm. These are the people who are writing the comics and are trying to make sure the ca- the characters stay true to the characters Marvel's trying to establish, you know, and to sit there and, and take their power away and say, oh, no, 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 we're going to go the, the Warner Brothers route and we're going to create movies where the comic book people are, aren't involved at all. Well, you're going to end up with, you know, Batman yeah. and Robin. And... Yeah, you know, you know what's going to happen? They're, you're going to see Batman and Superman come out and the very next day. They're going to reinstate that group with all with, with even more power. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, it could have gone well, better, but <laughs> I I think though I, we've talked a lot about the whole the the degree of influence of people in the comics, and I, and I think there's there's legitimacy that that the people in, who write the comics definitely have obviously uh, ideas and that are worth consideration i don't necessarily think that this move will take their voice away from from things in these movies and furthermore i think the people that they're hiring as it is to be to to head up these films are big enough fans of the comics that they who've read enough of the comics that it's they're not looking to (sighs) to violate that uh, that trust and that 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 message um, with the people. I don't think I you. Remem- I don't think I just you remember. Need, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I just. I don't think you need you know uh, Stanley in the room to make a good Spider-Man movie. But you have no. to have a Stanley well, cameo. Yes, you do. But I'm saying like <laughs> you know if you were making you know eventually they're hopefully going to make a good Spider-Man movie. But you know for it to be good doesn't require that you know. Uh, Bendis is there and influencing things or that uh, any of the, the the prior writers who've done some of the more successful runs of Spider-Man are actively a part of it. It just requires the people who appreciated those stories and, and those things that make up the essence of what Spider-Man is being in charge and being well, involved. Don't forget uh, Schumacher, right? He's the guy that did the, the last two Batman movies. The, yeah. yeah, Batman movies. Um, he was a Batman fan. Yeah, but he, but he was a was... fan of the '66 uh, TV show. So right, right, and that's what I'm saying. That, but that's not the types of directors they're putting in charge of these things, and or writers not, for that matter. Not yet. Um, I don't. And it, also, Kevin Feige strikes me as the type who's a fan of all of this stuff. It's not he, and he is ultimately at the, at the helm here. And as long as Kevin Feige is in in place, I don't care who his bosses are, because I trust in Feige. <laughs> Do you have that little button on your Yes, shirt? I think he does. It's on my um, underpants. And, and by the way, speaking <laughs> of Stan Lee, did anyone catch uh I believe he was just recently on Larry King and yep. uh, and they and he was asked, "So why do you think the Fantastic 4 failed?" And do you know what his answer was? Oh. Uh, no, what was his answer? Yeah. Because he said it was it he he said there was two reasons. Uh one, no one consulted him on the script. <laughs> but the well, but the but the more important one is he didn't have a cameo. Yeah. 
that I think is a joke response, though. Like, yeah, yeah there's there's there are certain movies he hasn't had cameos in. Um, and when it comes to a Fantastic Four movie, he certainly should have a cameo in it, um, being that he was instrumental in that that uh, set of characters. But right. um, but I, I don't think his cameo is the is the make or break point of a movie necessarily. Uh, it definitely is. It's always fun to see Stan's cameos in these movies. I love seeing how Stan shows up in all these various movies, and hopefully he'll be able to continue doing it for a long time. Um, he's getting up there. Um, but I do think, uh, but you're right. I think that, that maybe there is some validity to him not having consulted on the film at all. But I mean, so let me ask you this. Well, that, do you let, think, let me just, just to throw a hypothetical okay. out there. Do you think that the movie would have been better if they had like some version of the fantastic car or some, some version of Herbie involved somehow? In the Herbie? Movie? Really? Yes. Herbie? <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. Do you think those things would have helped in any way? No, not at all. Because because they had designs for both of those things. Like I know, they, and and, but and that, they were horrible. They were ridiculous. Um, right, but that goes back to trying to uh, market toys versus trying to do a good movie. To an extent, but yeah, the the core problem was that they were trying to write this movie to be something antithetical to what the Fantastic Four was. You know, uh, I don't I don't have a problem with grounding to a degree that it's semi believable science. But that doesn't mean that it has to be dark and gritty in, right. in addition to it. And I think that's where they went off the rails is they tried to make this too much of a, you know, dark, suspenseful, you know, gothamic uh, type of drama when and that is not what the Fantastic Four is about. You know, Plus, what? I'm going to use that at, you know, for one of my reviews from now on the, the worst rating will be Gothamic. Gothamic. <laughs> I should have said Gothamic. I don't know why I would say Gothamic. <laughs> It, it fits. Gothenic. Oh, I think you Gothenic. just named the episode. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, that was so awesome. It, it made me wonder when he made that statement, because he, he was obviously joking when he said it, but it made me wonder if there was any truth. Like, has he seen all of the Marvel scripts before the movies were made? You well, know? More than likely. Probably not. I, 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 actually I would say so. I think he saw it in the extent that he had a script to know what his part was. But I don't think he reviewed them as a consultant in every single case. Ah, see, now I need to know this. Stan, if you're listening, <laughs> we need to get you on the show so you can talk about this. So, Yeah. Stan's always listening. I know. You just have to, you just have to, to call out to him. He can hear your voice. Yeah. <laughs> he is the Matrix. Have, um. have faith in Stan. <laughs> in, in Stan we trust. So, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I would be interested to know the answer, to you, but my... I, I doubt it. Is it would be my intuition? I think again, as long as you have people who have a, a strong appreciation for the for the the true content and are trying to pay homage to it and trying to honor it well, then then you can do then you can do good with these things. I think all the cases of of things what where things did poorly is because there were either those people weren't there or there were too strong of other influences in the way um for instance with fantastic four i get the impression it's not really clear how much of it would is the director's fault and how much of it's the studio's fault but i tend to believe the studio is more to blame than josh trank um because i think the problem is josh trank is a young new director and yeah, he might have had a certain vision, a certain idea of how he wanted this to play out, which may not have been really the best um, vision of it per se. Um, but if I'd like to believe that if he did it on his own, that if he didn't have studio influence, we might have had a slightly better version of Fantastic Four than what we had. Right. Only slightly. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much better. Might have been a lot better. Might have been great. But what we got, you know, what we got was terrible. And should not exist. It's an abomination and needs to be burned with fire. <laughs> um, so going back to to John's original point um, with the uh, separation of uh, church and state. I mean, um, TVs and movies. <laughs> um, nice. I don't think I don't think it's going to be as much of an issue with Agents of Shield and Agent Carter because yeah. they're on ABC, which is owned by Disney. So. Disney's already, you know, been up. It already has the shows, right? Has, has already had a problem had... with the Netflix shows, though. 
that's the question, you know, because yeah. I think they're being completely done by Marvel, and I don't know how much Disney's involved with those at all. I think at this point they may not be in any way other than the fact that they own them. Um, I don't know. Disney pretty much exerts influence in everything that they own, so I, I would tend to believe that they're obviously they're aware that these things are happening. They're making money from them, so and they're making money for them, going to exert some degree of influence over them and have right. an opinion about it. And and regardless of any of these things, like there's part of the reason that they're doing these shows is as a venue to introduce characters that they don't have the bandwidth to introduce on the big screen right. um, with the intent that they could very well show up on the big screen. Um, and I don't think that that's going to change with this change, or at least I hope not. I'm hopeful. Um, I'm optimistic that I think that there's still a chance for uh television canon characters to transition to the big screen right oh yeah no definitely because um it, it seems like the person who was most against uh agents of shield and the movies intertwining was whedon it wasn't right, marvel and I, it wasn't disney it was right which i think was more stressed than it was reality i don't think he really felt that way and i'll forgive him for that it'd no. be, yeah it'd be hard to see why he would feel like that because it just it, it I mean, he's just, why would, he almost why, frustrating for you, the, the character. It was his, he, he touted it as a great thing when it was coming to television. Uh, was, he was in this fever pitch of being overwhelmed and, and oversaturated from, from working on Age of Ultron, that he was just spewing things that he didn't necessarily believe. Right. <laughs> Fine. It was a fever. It was a fever statement. We'll, we'll let it go at that. Um, hmm. So, all right. So we've talked about... Uh, we were in, we didn't really talk about Agents of yeah. Shield other than it's coming back and they're going to be concentrating heavily on obviously the Inhumans this season. Um, and they're going to be bringing in a new main Daisy villain. Daisy gets a like. haircut. Daisy gets a haircut. Yes. An Inhuman. She does get a haircut. That's a thing. Um, and she's Daisy <sighs> this season. That's a, that's an important factor. Right. She's not going to be Sky anymore. They're making that transition. She's going by her real name. Um, which I can see. I mean. New- if you found out finally what your real name was after such a long time of not knowing, I think you would embrace it eventually. But is she going to be? Um, is she going to be using her powers a lot? I mean, because that she, does she's kind of be unbalance the things. Warriors, a bit. essentially, she's the secret warrior lead at this point. She is the role that she is in the comics, and so yeah, I think she is going to be using her abilities more and and be more confident with them. Um, that's I think going to be an important mo of the season. Um, though it does seem, for, at least from the preview, that there's going to be some tension between Lincoln and Mac, um, which will be interesting to see how that plays out. Right. Hmm. So, so yeah, we don't know. I mean, we don't know anything other than, again, the, the, she's definitely going to be Daisy. It's going to be Inhuman Heavy, Secret Warriors, and uh, the new villain. Who is it again? Flash. Flash, right. So, so that's, 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 inter- I mean, it's funny, like, at least they're not, the, the one thing I do like about agents is they're not hashing the same villain over and over and over again at you, you know? Like yeah, they, although we will, we will probably definitely see Ward trying his damnedest to get the new Hydra order in place. So, right, I don't sure. think he's, at, he's definitely not down and out. He's, he's back with, he's going to be back with a vengeance. No, and, and, but that's an interesting storyline that, that has a good story and is moving along well. It's yes. not like it doesn't feel forced down your throat. It's not like <laughs> right. you know, um, getting. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example. It's not like Ward is this just the bad guy doing something silly in every episode and they get right. foiled. And but he escapes right. at the end. In reality, he's probably one of the best composed villains they have because you know he's gone from being a, a double agent but a good guy to being. The bad guy, but feeling justified in 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 his stance right. because he right. had leadership that he was following, and then doing all these things that were sort of on this gray line, you know, because he felt that it was best for Sky. And now, now he's a he's a man with the vengeance, and so he's he's gone full dark. He's gone Heisenberg, um, in a very natural way. <laughs> Another good scripted show on television, John. Uh, yes. Was, was on television. <laughs> was. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, all right. That, yes. That so, one I, so I, I, will, all... I will point out one more thing, though. So we we barely touched on Supergirl, and I'm kind of excited for that show. But I'm curious, Dave, in the in the uh, the trolling of weird websites that you do, 
um, if there is any similar uh, backlash to the the racial bending of of uh, James. Olsen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy, no, no you've gone corporate. Uh, I've seen some. I've seen some, but I've seen a lot of people who just uh, this is. I'm excited for Supergirl. I can't wait to see it. I don't know how they're going to handle um, Superman in the in the show. Like obviously in the preview, they show a shadowy figure that's Superman, but that's it. Like they don't. I get the impression that's the most we're getting. Right, and, right. And then which, he goes off world for five years. Um, which that kind of upsets me. It's like we really should have him once in a while on the show. And right. if you've got to get someone different to play is. him. If you got to get someone a different to play them, then then great. Um, just because you're doing a separation, you're having Flash in the movies, and you have a Flash TV show. So come on, then fine. Let's just do a full separation between the two, and and people who like the shows can have those characters. Um, but yeah. what I've seen is a lot of people just saying they think it looks stupid because they're like it's uh, they're saying it's you know Ugly Betty, but with Supergirl and and those kinds of things, and it's just like. They're already no. calling her ugly. No, no, no. The the concept of the show of Ugly Betty, you know, or 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 Gone Girl, or like any stupid uh, girl it's, show. It's a, right. It's a it's a girl drama, you know, uh, finding her foothold kind of thing. Right. Um, wrapped in a wrapped in a superhero show, but it's like, but that's what's going to make it good. It's it is it's going to be humanity. Right. It's going to be an actual a show God, with. God forbid we have humanity and characters. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's going to be a human feeling show where she actually has emotions and feelings and has a story arc of her being a shy, nerdy girl becoming a superhero and having to deal with that. And as opposed to just, you know, the comic book character, you know, and, and, you know, it's why the Marvel movies work, people. So, (laughs) of course, it's why Supergirl's going to work. It's why I'm, it's probably why I'm more excited about that than I am about some of the other shows that are coming back. You know, I definitely want to see what they can do with it. I mean, they can do it really right or they could screw it up, you know, and 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 have it feel like that parody video of uh, the Black Widow movie um, (laughs) that's been floating around on on, on YouTube. Um, So hopefully they don't go that direction. They go like, yes, this makes sense. It works. There's a good emotional arc here. And, I'm, you know, cheering for her when she finally puts the costume and the ass on and saves people, you know. It, As I, I, yeah, the extended trailer looked really good, though. It looked like yeah, it, it, it looked like a, a real. It almost looked like a movie type thing, you know. They yes, it, it was yeah. it was that good. Yes, so yeah. I, I think I think it's going to be good. I can't wait for it. And um, do you think she'll yeah. be on Flash? That's what I, that's the, that's the question. I've gotten the impression, that. yeah, and I've gotten I've gotten mixed signals on that. The most recent uh, information seems to suggest the likelihood of any crossover is very very slim. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see. I I really hope they do because that would just be right. awesome to tie her in with everything. Yeah, um, it may be something right. that could happen, but not this scene, really. All yeah, right. and J- well, just remember if they're bringing Constantine, that means there's magic. If there's magic, she has a major weakness to that. There you go. There's another show Constantine can show up in. I didn't even think of it that way, you know. But again, and it's the it, same yeah. producers. Of, I don't know. Or it's the yeah. same people doing Supergirl that have done Flash and Arrow. So it's like, it's just on a different channel. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, so basically what it comes down to is we have a plethora of really good and Gotham TV shows coming out this season. <laughs> and Gotham. Oh, <laughs> oh or, that was beautiful. Or, or, or Gothnic. Gothnic. Gothamic, Gothamic. Yes. We have one Gothnik show. Gotham. Um, so on that note, uh, guys, I, I, I know it feels kind of abrupt, but I have a hard stop today because um, I have somewhere to be. So. Uh, and you're tired of holding your table up? No, I'm just holding my <laughs> microphone at this point. Um, so, so if you guys have nothing else major to add, we'll, 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 we'll uh, put a pin in it. No, I think we did good. All right. No, and don't forget. Just, oh, oh, go ahead. I'll just say I, I need to go and cloak myself in coffee now. Yes. Yes. And don't forget, now go back and listen to episode 120 if you haven't listened to it yet. You can have a chance to win those tickets for New York Comic Con. But again, you got to listen to episode 120 for your chance. Um, and again, thanks to Pete Batesman for that. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll announce who the winner was on our next episode. So, uh, yeah. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, as always, don't let your cape get caught in the door. Have a good week.
Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Uh, taking over Dad's mic so I can be part of superhero speak. Duh. Well, there are better ways to join the conversation. Really? Like what? Well, you can interact with them on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and even Pinterest. Wait, people use Pinterest? And what's Google Plus? I don't know. Something to do with circles. Anyway, you can also see all their posts, including comic book reviews, on their website, where you can also sign up for their mailing list. Cool. Yep. Are you still gonna try to hijack Dad's mic? Nope. I'm gonna try to answer the stump the key question. Nice. So who do you think would win in a fight between Rainbow Dash and Squirrel Girl? Oh, that's a hard one. Oh no, Dad's waking up. Run for your lives! Oh, what are you guys doing? That cape's gonna get caught on the door.